Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Hands down, this is the first clock I've made. Time will tell if it works. I hope this intro isn't ticking too long. Let's get on with the video. Time will tell. I already said that one. For this build, you'll need these 3D printed parts. Of course, you'll need three buttons, not one and a half, but I'm halfway there. You'll also need this 1602 LCD module. I'd prefer yellow for this build, but uh, blue is all I have available. You'll also need four M3 eight millimeter countersunk screws, four M2 eight millimeter countersunk screws, and four M2 eight millimeter nuts. You'll also need a method of connecting it. I'm using an Arduino Uno, because uh, that's what I have available. I'd recommend a Mega, because that has more pins, and some jumper cables. These are not thick enough for starting your car. You'll also need an Olive Garden Mint, um, and that just is like a little prize for later, you know? Another thing you'll need is six millimeter by six millimeter by seven millimeter tactile push switches, which are not this. This is all I have on hand. I'll show you what the CAD model looks like. You basically just press them in. Let's start off by putting the LCD module aside. Uh, we won't use that until last. And starting off with these buttons. Zero more minutes for them to come off the printer, actually. That was perfect timing. <laughs> I wonder if we're being robbed. First step is to get these buttons and put them into the little cavities on this faceplate. You may need to peel off any residue or any supports. You want these to freely move. Ah, as I said, freely move. <laughs> uh, took that literally, didn't you? Now, there's these four M2 screws and nuts. To fix it in place, you only have to do two. Uh, so that's just what I'll show. The repair work on Big Ben is meant to take three years. That's a long time considering they're working around the clock. Now is when you would put in the tactile momentary push switches. And these just fit right into here with the slots. You'll then super glue them in uh, so that they fit in place there. Then after that, you get your LCD display and fix it in right here. If you're ever changing a tire, you'll know that you're supposed to do everything in a star pattern. Um, this isn't a tire though, so I, it just really doesn't matter that that much. But I mean, it is good practice, so let's make a star. I made a belt out of clocks. It was a waste of time. And now here we have it. And I forgot to take the, the protective film off for the second time. Let's go on to the wiring. The wiring for this is really simple. Um, all the wiring, it shows us what it wants. I'm just plugging them in like this. So this ground goes to ground on the Arduino. Here we go. Uh, the next one is VCC. That stands for voltage. Cool, very cool and that goes to five volts. Um, SDA stands for Standard Disinfectant Academy, and that one goes to SDA on the Arduino. Um, right here, it's SDA. And then SCL stands for Silly Cool Little Otter. These are the standard IEE um, acronyms. IEE. -E. E, 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 E. What did the digital clock say to the grandfather clock? Look, no hands. Okay, now we have the uh, LCD display hooked up. The buttons are also pretty simple. We have three buttons, each one. Uh, you connect one pin to ground and the other to a pin on the Arduino, which we'll assign later. I'm gonna start at two and go from there. So two, three, four. Make sure your mint is out of reach of children because they'll eat it and that'll be sad. I'm gonna take this opportunity to completely destroy my prototype in the name of science. I never leave home without my soldering iron. Much to my parents' dismay. I guess that whole scene wasn't filming. <laughs> That's really awkward because uh, I dropped some uh, some good bomb nuggets of knowledge stuff. Who am I kidding? I was just rambling. This is our ground wire. Uh, it's all striped, black and white. Usually it's all black, um, but today it's gonna look like a 1940s, uh, like uh, uh, 
prisoner. I guess it can be solved. Now I'm just gonna crimp these all and plug them into the Arduino. Luckily, I also never leave home without my crimpers. Um, Thanksgiving dinner was a was kind of a mess. I accidentally sat on them and then uh, my, yeah. Oh, it was, it was a disaster, but it's, it's over now. So uh, yeah, just be careful where you put your crimpers. Don't want to sit on the crimpers or, or the very sharp mm -hmm. pin headers. With this electrical tape, it's red. You don't understand how cool that is. It's like a fire truck color, you know? Unless your fire truck, of course, is yellow or... Three, two, one. Happy New Year! It also tells the temperature, so that's good. And I'm going to show you how you can get the configuration. So you'll download it from either the link in the description below, the Cessna 172 project, and then you'll open it in here and you'll select OAT clock. Um, but once we're in here, we have all of the configurations and there's some cool stuff working in here. Um, it reads if the engine is on, it makes sure that the buttons are held for the proper amount of time, a lot of cool stuff. Um, it took me like three days. Let's go to Movie Flight Modules, where you have your Arduino, and we can upload, update the firmware to an Uno. I uploaded the firmware, and now we have this Movie Flight Uno. So now we select it, go open, and then we click this Movie Flight Uno um, or Mega. All right, now we have all of the settings preloaded. We have our display with two lines, 16 columns. Um, we have our top button two, left button three, and our control button four, just like we wired up right here. We are going to click upload config, click OK, and now we have a, our, our LCD thing. It says Biflight rocks. I guess it's either an ally or it loves biplanes. Um, if it does ask you to serial the orphans, manage orphan serials, um, then it would pop up something like this. This pop-up is basically saying, this is a Disney movie. Both of the parents tragically died somehow, and we need to pick up the pieces. So you basically select the Arduino from this list, and then the Arduino we have is Arduino no. And so we select this and assign it. Click OK, and then boom, it all works. Speaking of it all working, let's give it a try. Click Run. We can cycle between temperatures, the documentation I found, and the reference images I found were had an E after it for a voltage, I think electricity. Anyway, we can also cycle through the universal coordinated time, which matches perfectly, uh, local time, which also matches perfectly, flight time. Flight time is off because they assume you taxi for a while if you start on the runway. So I did this time since you started the simulator, or actually time since the power button was last flipped. And you also have elapsed time right here. For the ET, you can click start to start up a timer. This one's really cool because it has seconds and minutes with a separator. And then once an hour happens, it, it switches to minutes and hours. And this I did all off of seconds. Um, so that's cool. And then you press it again, it stops. So you have that time to reference. Then you press it again and it resets. Hold down this button. I think it's select. For three seconds, it goes into test mode. This is test mode. So it highlights all the displays to make sure all of the displays are working. Although um, it's an LCD module, so if anything shows, there's a good chance everything is working. Technically, test mode should just be a bunch of black bars, but... And as soon as you release, it goes back to your screen. Now, if we go to flight time and hold this button down for three seconds, just like in the real one, it resets. But once you go into the cockpit, and you're done with your flight, you turn off the radius off. Once you turn everything off, your clock turns off too, um, and you're ready to go. 
Now, once you turn it back on, it resets the flight time to zero and you can restart your journey. I basically went through this entire manual right here and basically tried to follow as closely as I could the normal operation and all of the details about the little tiny quirks it has. There are some things still not working, but I hope you enjoy this clock. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Bala, Chris, David, EC Drew, Juan Fortes, Morgan, and Scott for helping support the Cessna 172 project on Patreon. Thank you so much for your huge help. Um, I hope you enjoy the video and have a fantabulous rest of your day. Have a good one. See you later. Stay spicy. Yes, <laughs> I still got it. <laughs>